Okay, so a lot of people have asked me uh, if, they, if the robots, if their creation is feasible. I'm like, what robots? Like robots we see in movies. Um, for example, this one here. Somebody said it earlier. Where did it come from? iRobot. Robot. Who has not seen this movie, iRobot? Oh, well, you, you, that's because you're too busy uh, texting and stuff. But anyways, uh, iRobot is a movie with Will Smith and this, this uh, robot. They have a lot of human characteristics, as you can see here. Uh, they look, look pretty human. What, what's this one from? Terminator. Terminator. Yeah, it's a really good one, yeah. Uh, what's that one from? <laughs> it, well, if y'all were born before 2002, you might know. This is a robot from RoboCop 2, old school movie. And, and in, this mo oh no, in this movie, okay, so in this movie they take the central nervous system, which is the brain, spinal cord, and in fact, I even think they take the peripheral nervous system. They, so they take out the entire nervous system of a villain, a bad guy, a criminal, and they put it into this machine, and they, they coordinate this movement such that the machine is being run by this guy's nervous system, and he's, he's a bad guy. It's a cool robot, though. What's this one from? Avatar. Now, this one is the only one that has the uh, the full human component in it. We've got the human or the general, the mean guy with the with the scars. You know, he's inside this and he's manipulating this robot and he runs around and he shoots shoots, shoots uh, blue people, right? So we know we know each of these uh, each of these robots now. Okay. So my question now now my question to you is how feasible is it, uh, especially in the age of technology and this this uh, it's growing exponentially? Are uh, are each of these robots? Very, very much so. Any others? Not very. Not very. Somewhere in the middle. I'll go with that. I like that answer. You can always go right with, uh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> okay, so anyways, what we can do is I'm going to show you something that's kind of cool. And first I'm going to talk to you about the human body when I'm comparing the human body and computers or technology per se. So if I just talk about the muscular system, and I believe we've touched on this earlier this semester, I just want to talk about muscles, and I want to look at, look at muscles from an external perspective and uh, kind of like a, a global view of what muscles can do. Uh, so let's say I take the bicep, the, uh, the, the, the biceps muscle here, my left arm. What can that muscle do? It can only do two things. It can flex and extend. I'm getting some answers. Okay. If we're more specific, a muscle can only do two things. Each muscle can only contract and relax. That's all it can do. Now, why would I say that a muscle in and of itself cannot extend? Even though our muscles do extend, why would I say a muscle cannot by itself extend? That's right, because each time our muscle extends, like my tricep is extending, it's because the bicep is contracting, forcing the extensions of the tricep. So technically, if you look at it very specifically and we're technical about it, each muscle can either contract or it can relax. We're going to call that two degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom, okay? You might, you might learn that in, 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 uh, later on in some of your other classes. So, if there are around 640 muscles in the human body, 320 pairs, you know, 320 pairs of muscles, and there's 640 muscles total, how many total combinations of contraction and relaxation do we have throughout all 640 muscles? 1280. 1280? Did you just, you did two times 640? Okay, uh, good guess, but way off. Yeah. Uh, if we have two degrees of freedom, how would we quantitatively define this? I'll, uh, just so you know, you're not the only person to say that. Tons of people say that. But just, just think a little bit more mathematically. Two degrees of freedom, 640 different muscles, so how many different, different combinations? What I mean by that is, okay, so I'm going to take the human body, my left bicep contracts, the, all the other muscles relax. That's one. And then my left bicep contracts, my right bicep contracts, and all the others relax. That's two. You understand? So I'm develop, de building these combinations. Actually, there's a formula right there. Not 2 times 640, 2 to the 640th power. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, on and on and on. All right? Don't, don't talk like that when you're doing the math, but it's 2 to the 640th power. Can anybody give me a guess about how big that number is? Too big, you know. Too big to put on the PowerPoint. Well done. I had a professor tell me one time, now I've never counted uh, all the atoms in the universe, but this, this professor told me one time that this number is larger than the total number of atoms in the universe. It won't let you do it on a calculator. It's an overflow. I would imagine so, yes. I would imagine it is a, 
a calculator overflow. Uh, so, but anyways, this number is unfathomably large. Now, granted, I'm not going to count all the atoms in the universe, but I would imagine that it is relatively large. In fact, I'm just going to have to label this dang near infinity at this point. Okay? So it's really, really large. Now, how can I use this, the capability of the human brain when it simply comes to organizing the muscles to computers? Anybody want, anybody want to kill you? Okay. Well, first of all, first of all let, me, let me branch on this a little bit. Basically, what I'm getting, my point here, 2 to the 640th power, is that even though that number is incredibly large, our brain is able to work with, coordinate, control to a certain extent that amount of possibility. Do you understand? So I'm just getting, I'm, getting, I'm pointing out how truly miraculous and amazing the, the human brain is. And this is just the muscular system from a global perspective. I'm not talking about the integumentary system, uh, the endocrine system, the cardiovascular system. This is just one of the many systems and just one component of that system. So the brain is, is amazing. Okay? In, in many ways, it's limitless. So, the reason, so Jordan, what I asked earlier, I said, how can we compare this to a computer? Let me, let me answer that question. Musculoskeletal system of the human body, 2 to the 640th power. A home computer, at its core, the information in a computer is measured in bits. Do you know where the number bit, I mean the, number, the word bits come from? Nobody knows where bits come from? You're the computer generation. It's a combination of the words binary and digit. Binary digit. Why? Because at the core of computer language, is one of two numbers, a zero or a one, binary digit, right? Bit, that's where we get the term bit. That is two degrees of freedom, a zero or a one. So this makes it kind of easy or relatively simple to compare my example of the human musculoskeletal system with the computer because they both have two degrees of freedom at their core. Do you understand? Your computer is going to be around two to the thirtieth. You understand? Gigabytes. That's a lot of information, right? Is it anywhere near the capacity of the human brain at this point? No. What about all the computers in the world to the 60th? You take all the information, digital information, the bits in the world were about 2 to the 60th. Anywhere near the capacity of the human brain? Nowhere near it. Some people pronounce this the hypo, some people say hippocampus, but either way, this very small portion of the brain right here, according to experts, can hold about 2 to the 50th. They're called petabytes. Some people say petabytes. We're going to call petabytes of information. So what I want to point out is, look at, look at our information here, 2 to the 30th and 2 to the 60th. Nowhere near the capacity of one human brain. So with that being said, how feasible is it that we can develop a machine that is as capable in coordination alone as the human body. I don't want to be one of those guys that says, you know, the earth is flat and it always will be. But if we just look at it logically, we're nowhere, we're, it, it's not looking feasible. It's not looking good. But I might be jumping ahead of myself. Why? Because these robots that I mentioned earlier, they don't have a lot of the musculature that we have. They don't have a colon, do they? So, we're already decreasing, decreasing degrees of freedom. But, let's talk about what they do have. And these, these particular robots here, if you watch the movie, have a lot of human characteristics. They can make facial expressions. Uh, even, even you can see on the arm, they have different heads of the bicep. So, extremely, extremely uh, human-like in many, many ways. Uh, so, but here I'm going to say, still too human-like, I'm sorry, computers are not going to get this far. What about this guy? Okay, so now we're limiting the facial expressions. I don't know if you ever saw Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie. He doesn't make any facial expressions. He's just, I'll be back. You know, his face just stays the same. Okay. Limiting musculature still, but with the fact of the coordination, the biceps, even the fingers and, and all that, still limited. What about this guy? Remember, I said they took out the nervous system of a human being, a human being linked it to uh, computers and mechanical aspects. Feasible or not? So now we're, I'm saying, okay, so now we're taking the brain out and we're putting into a robot. So where does the challenge begin here? The challenge would begin linking. 
non-biological with biological, right? Directly. I'm going to say, I'm not going to say yes or no, but I'm going to say that's a big, big challenge. What about this guy? <clears throat> now here we're keeping the, hu the human component intact. It's a big RC. It's a big remote control robot. Who says, yeah, this is feasible? I personally am going to say this is very feasible. In fact, there's probably, the military's probably got some stuff like this that we don't know about. However, what would be a big challenge here? Look closely at the picture. Think about the, the movie itself. What would be a big challenge here? Remember, the more degrees of freedom you have, the problem becomes exponential, literally exponential. Uh, uh, energy, you, 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 you're a good, good answer, but you're going the wrong way. Just look at the mechanics. If I drew a circle right here, what would that tell you? Or right here, even. The hand. Look at this. How many degrees of freedom are in the hand alone? If I'm looking at three joints per finger times four, okay, look, what is, how many is that? And then two in the thumb, what am I looking at there, plus the wrist. There are hundreds of degrees of freedom right here. You understand? So this alone makes it profound. If they just would have made this guy with a little hook, from a, uh, from a standpoint of coordination, it's a lot easier, right? But we're, we're keeping degrees of freedom. However, I'm going to say this is probably really feasible. You're limiting a lot, limiting a lot you're really decreasing degrees of freedom. You, the only problems you're going to have is this musculature here and equilibrium problems. You have this bipod stature, so you've got to get this equilibrium state, and that's going to be kind of difficult. It's kind of weird, and I hope I didn't ramble too much, but you understand the complexity of the human brain and how truly amazing it is. Everybody good?